and then we'll say up arrow till we get there and then port 3 and then up arrow switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 20 and then port 4 port 4 switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 30 and then port 5 switch port mode access switch port access VLAN and this is going to be and I've made one mistake here and you can see that I've made this mistake and this is kind of a um, let's see here well the management VLAN is supposed to be VLAN 77 and the native VLAN is supposed to be VLAN 55 right and you can see that I actually set the trunk native to VLAN 77 so we'll have to um, change that right so that's no good um, management VLAN 77 okay that's good alright so that's small problem we can fix that all right, so switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 77. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go back to port 2, and no, we'll go back to port 1, and we'll change the native VLAN to 55. So what I'll do is I'll say switch port access port 1, there it is, and we'll say switch port... see here switch port trunk native VLAN 55 and we're gonna have to make sure that that actually took effect so we'll say control C we'll do a show run and we'll see here that yes we've set the trunk native port to 55 where it's supposed to be switch port mode trunk right and I'm not seeing the allowed VLANs here so um, but maybe if you did one through um, switch port trunk allowed one through 1005 maybe it doesn't show and then port 2 is VLAN 10 and let's see here port 5 is 77 that's good port 4 is 30 Port 3 is VLAN 20 alright that's good let's see if we can get those allowed VLANs to show up on the trunk port so what we'll do is we'll say conf t interface fa0 slash 1 again which is the first port where our trunk is and we'll say of course it's switch port mode trunk right which we already put in and then switch port trunk allowed let's just say VLANs 1 through or you could say possibly 1 and then can you do comma 1 10 20 30 55 77 can you do that so there we go switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1 10 20 30 55 and 77 all right and then of course the last command was and we'll just put it in one more time just so you can see it switch port trunk native VLAN 55 control C show run and you can see there there's the the VLANs that are allowed and it looks pretty good okay so if we go back to our list we have all of these things uh, finished now we set up our VLANs IP address on interface VLAN 77 our default gateway we configured the trunk the native VLAN on the trunk which is 55 we configured the switch ports for to be access ports and we put the switch ports on the separate VLANs now we don't have to have a port on native VLAN right now so that's just this is for backwards compatibility so now it's time to configure the router right 
So for the router, we'll go into the router and you can see there's no passwords on these routers or the switches, just we're going right into global config mode and we're going to configure interface FA0 slash 0. So interface FA0 slash 0 and we're going to right away we'll say no shutdown and to turn on the interface. Now you can see it's got a green light. Now we need to set up these sub interfaces, right? So sub-interface 10, 20, 30, 55, and 77, and then he's going to be host 1 on all of these networks. So he's 10.1, 20.1, 30.1, 55.1, and 77.1. So that should be pretty easy. So to do this, we now need to go into sub-interface mode. And to do that, we'll say interface FA0 slash 0 dot 10 to signify sub-interface 10, right? and now we are in sub interface mode notice this okay so I'll hit enter again so you can see it enter enter alright config sub interface so now the first thing we need to do is set up in cap turn on the 802.1q protocol so we'll say tab encapsulation dot tab dot 1q right then we'll put a question mark and now we need the VLAN ID so we'll say VLAN 10. All right, so that's for encapsulation.q. We're going to tag it with VLAN 10, and now we need the IP address, IP address 192.168.10.1 space 255.255.255.0. Spread this out a little bit, hit enter, and that's done. So now We'll just do up arrow till we get to interface FA00.10. We'll change it to dot twenty. Enter. And then we'll go up to encapsulation dot one q twenty. And then change the IP address to twenty dot one. Up arrow to get to interface interface FA0 slash zero dot thirty. Okay. Hit enter again up arrow encapsulation dot one q vlan 30 right because we're on sub interface 30 and then up arrow ip address 30.1 okay and then now we'll go straight to now we have to do the native vlan so the native vlan is going to be a little bit different so what we'll do is we'll say interface fa0 slash or 0 dot 55 and we're going to say encapsulation question mark okay dot tab dot one q put a question mark here and then we'll say 55 space question mark and notice if I put the 55 in and then I put a space and a question mark we can put native at the end to make it the native VLAN so we can specially configure the sub interface the encapsulation dot one q fifty five specially configure it for being native all right there it is and now the IP address fifty five dot one all right now last one interface sub interface seventy seven encapsulation 77 and then the IP address 77.1 all right control C enter show run and you can see all of the sub interfaces right and they're all active and so now we should be able to communicate across the router. Let's do quickly a show IP route to look at the routing table and it's always good to look at the routing table for sure and you can see that the router sees the 10 network, the 20 network, the 30 network, the 55 network, and the 77 network all as connected networks 
and you can see the sub interfaces right here and so now it's going to be able to route between all these networks so now we could if we wanted to we could say I'm gonna take this management and let's see if we can ping 10.100 so we open up our laptop here command prompt first let's see if we can ping the gateway 192.168.77.1 we can ping our router, that's good, good sign there. And let's see if we can ping 10.100. And of course we're gonna to need to have ARP cache resolve the IP address to a MAC address, it takes some time, and there it is. All right, let's see if we can do 20.100. All right, there's 20.100 and 30.100. Okay, so that's it. For the router, all we had to do was configure sub interfaces encapsulation dot one Q and special for the native VLAN, right? So basically all we did for the router was configure our sub-interfaces. All these networks are connected and now our trunk is active and we can communicate between all of these or route packets between all of these separate networks across this trunk to the router. And this is a router on a stick because there's only one port or one line coming off of the router to hit the switch. So all of these networks are going across just one um, link, right? So that's the router and the stick idea. And if, as opposed to if you had something like this where you had VLAN 10 and you had one link just for the 10 VLAN and another link just for the 20 VLAN and then another link just for the 30 VLAN and then you'd have the three IP addresses on the three Ethernet interfaces. Instead of that we do the router on a stick, we take advantage of the trunk and we trunk from the switch to the router.